The Lone Ranger. Got him. I certainly picked a bad time to send you into town for supplies. What do you mean, Kimitali? While you were gone, I caught a glimpse of that outlaw we've been after, Matt Cagle. Oh, that's plenty good news. You sure it was him? Yes, it was Cagle, all right. I tried to run him down, but I lost his tracks on the rocky ground. There one thing me not understand, Kimitali. Oh, what's that? Why Matt Cagle come way out here? The only town near here is Buffalo Gap, and very small. There are no bank or express office to rob. It's primarily a way station for buffalo hunters. Did you see anything suspicious while you were in town? Uh, nothing suspicious, Kimasabi. There are not more than ten buildings in the whole town. The biggest one, a hotel. And it doesn't make sense. Why should a notorious outlaw like Matt Cagle be hanging around Buffalo Gap? Wait, Kimasabi, me just remember. A plenty strange party of buffalo hunters arrive in town this morning. What do you mean, strange? Uh, one of them young prince from some country in Europe. Him have a long name, me not remember it. Tano, that's not unusual. Visiting European royalty like to take their chance at buffalo hunting. And you think there's no connection between Matt Cagle and Young Prince? Well, I don't see how there could be. Even Matt Cagle wouldn't be foolish enough to try robbing a foreign prince. If he did, the whole United States government would be after him. Then what we do, Kimisabe? Matt Cagle gave us a slip many times now. Well, Tana, we know he's here for some purpose, and there's a chance it isn't good. We'll stay close by and try and pick up his trail again. Your Highness, you defeated me again. You improve every day. How can I help but improve with such an excellent instructor as you, Banner? And how many times must I warn Your Highness never to turn your back to an enemy? It could mean your death, you know. <laughs> but you're not my enemy. You're my uncle and my friend. Though, if you were my enemy, you would stand to gain much. My death would make you heir to the throne. Your Highness, do not talk like that. Your father entrusted me with your welfare and education. I always seek to make sure that when you do ascend the throne, you will be ready for its responsibilities. I was only teasing, Uncle. I know you served me well. Uh. Come in. You wish to see me? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Prince. You are addressing His Royal Highness, Prince Maximilian, and you bow when you speak to him. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, yes, Mr. Baron. I'm not Mr. Baron. I'm His Excellency D. Baron, Otto von Koenig. Uh, yes, Mr. Bear. I, I mean Your Excellency. Uncle, you're too harsh on the boy. He does not understand our ways. I do not wonder these Americans with their illusions of equality and their contempt for titles. <laughs> Uncle, you are the uh, hotel keeper's son, are you not? Well, what is it you wanted, boy? It's a gift. There's a note we all signed. Welcome to Prince Heinrich from the school children of Buffalo Gap. <laughs> Signed Chip Truett, President, Ralph Lawrence Abel, Vice President, Laurie Truett, Secretary and Treasurer. <laughs> well, Uncle, do you still say Americans have contempt for titles? All right. It's a Western hat to win the buffalo hunt. A hat like this for His Highness? Uncle. Thank you, boy. I appreciate the thought. Thank your friends for me. Yes, Your Highness. Uh, little barbarian. He's like all the rest of them. No menace, no culture. I warned you, Father, it would be a mistake for us to come here. But no, 
His Highness must learn the ways of other countries, he said. It would make him a better ruler someday. Oh, perhaps it will, Uncle. After all, we, we have learned much. All right, you better get some rest now. We go on our buffalo hunt at dawn. Are you sure the guide you've hired for the hunt tomorrow is experienced and reliable, Uncle? Of course, the best, Your Highness. I investigated him personally before I sent for him. He should be here sometime tonight. Well, till dawn then, Uncle. All right. Well, you'll force me to use this gun. Then use it. If I'm to die, I shall die fighting. I don't know who you think we are, but we mean you no harm. Don't lie to me. You were the two men my uncle hired to assassinate me. But you'll find I don't die easily. Well, what are you waiting for? My weapon is gone now. Why don't you shoot? This boy hard to convince. We not mean to harm him, King Azami. Save your breath, Redskin. I heard my uncle plotting with your friend last night. As for me, I still have two weapons left, these. And I must warn you, I was taught fisticuffs by the very best tutors in all of Europe. No ruffian can compete with my skill. What me do, Kimisami? This boy want lesson in fisticuffs, Indian style. I think you'd better give him that lesson, Taro. I'm afraid he's not going to listen to reason. Try it, Redskin. And when I finish with you, I'll challenge the masked man if he's not afraid. This boy have more courage than skill, Kimisami. I'll show you how much skill I have. Take it easy. I don't think you've had enough. You've proved your courage. You've learned that we know a bit about fighting over here. Now, suppose you tell us who you are and what you're doing here in this stable. But, but you must know who I am. My uncle hired you to kill me. I am Prince Heinrich Wilhelm Maximilian. Oh, that plenty big mouthful for name, Kimisami. Much too big for us, Tano. Suppose we just call you Hank. I am a prince of the blood royal. No one addresses me as Hank. It is customary to address me as your royal highness. It may be customary in your country, but not in ours. We'll just stick to Hank. Oh, plenty fine jewels in handle of knife, Kimisami. Tano, it's not a knife. It's called a stiletto. This belongs to you. You're giving it back to me? Why not? We mean you no harm. And this is the best way to prove it. I will never understand your American customs. <laughs> First you fight me like an enemy, then you trust me as a friend. One of our customs is to shake hands after a fight. No hard feelings. That's right, boy. Me like to be your friend. 
Perhaps I was taught fisticuffs by the wrong tutors. I should have come to America long ago. Hank, suppose you tell us about your uncle and these hired assassins. Well, it's, it's rather a long story. Perhaps we'd best sit down. Now, I want the truth. Did you see the prince leave last night? No, sir. I mean, no, Your Excellency. But you know where he's gone. No, sir. I only know there's a horse missing from the stable this morning. And a saddle. All right. Get out. Take him. Did you hear the boy? Yeah. I wonder what made the prince run away. I don't know. He must have heard us talking last night. There can be no other answer. We well, sure did a stupid thing, taking a horse and riding off into the wilderness. He won't last two days. Suppose he meets someone and starts talking. Oh, no. We must track him down. I want you to follow him and find him, wherever he is. And when I do, there is no time for a buffalo hunt now. When you find the prince, he will already be dead. Is it clear? Sure, Baron. Plenty clear. I'll find the kid dead. <laughs> That, my friends, is the end of my story. Who would have thought my uncle would be so ambitious to one day sit on my throne? But why you not go to Buffalo Gap and tell Sheriff what happened? Because my uncle would have only denied it, said I was having nightmares or something. Well, Hank's right, Tonto. If he'd have stayed anywhere near the Baron, his life would have been in greater danger than it is now. If I could contact my country's embassy in Washington, they should have to help me. Not that not possible. There are no telegraph offices within 100 miles of here. When your uncle finds you missing, he won't waste any time in sending Matt Cagle to look for you. You think Matt Cagle man him higher, Kimisami? I'm sure of it, Tonto. He couldn't be in this territory for any other reason. It'd be plenty good if we could find him and capture Baron at the same time. That's exactly what we must do. If we don't, Hank's life will be in constant danger. But uh, I could not allow you to take such risk for me. After all, I'm a foreign prince, and you are citizens of the United States. You owe me no allegiance. You still have a lot to learn about Americans, Hank. Isn't that right, boy? When someone in trouble, we not ask where they're from. We try to help. Kimisami, we go to Buffalo Gap and find Baron and Kegel? First, we have to show the Baron up for what he is. A would-be assassin. And how we do that? The Baron wants a chance to kill the Prince. We're going to give him that chance. But, uh, did you look everywhere? I looked everywhere within 20 miles of here. I lost his trail at the river. What is it? There's an Indian to see your excellency. I have no time for Indians. He says it's about the prince. Oh. All right. Let him come in. What do you want, Redskin? You man they call Baron? Yes, I am. You uncle of young prince from European country? What about the prince? Me find him last night in stable. Him fall off horse, hurts leg, can't travel far. Uh, what did he tell you? Him give me plenty of money to ride a nearest telegraph office with message. All right, but uh, what did he tell you? Uh, him tell me not to let you know me find him. Then why are you letting me know? Uh, me think a boy pay me so much money not to let you know, you pay even more of me to tell you. But uh, how will I know that you are telling the truth? Mm, me take this handkerchief from him. This is his. Where is it? You pay me enough money, me lead you to him. How much you want? Boy, give me a hundred dollars, and maybe you give me two hundred. All right, Indian, two hundred. But I must get the money in my bedroom. You'll wait here. You heard everything? Yeah, every word. That redskin is sure making it easy for us. Almost too easy. I don't like the looks of it. Aren't you going with him? Of course, I have no choice. If he has the prince hidden somewhere, I must find him. But as soon as we leave here, I want you to follow us. And keep out of sight until we reach our destination. Then move in and finish off the prince, huh? And the Indian, too. He learned far too much for his own good. Just a little something I carry in case of uh, emergency. <laughs> Remember, keep close behind us. All right, Indian. Let me go now. Your word, Redskin. You told him. Him pay me more money than you. 
I'm disappointed in you, Your Highness. Running away from your loving uncle. You know my only concern is your welfare. I know all about your concern for me, uncle. I heard you talking with that outlaw last night. Oh, how unfortunate it did, Your Highness. It has necessitated my killing you even sooner than I had planned. Me not understand this talk about killing. Give me what you promised, then me go. On the contrary, Indian. You stay. What do you mean? You did not think I was fool enough to follow you here without assuring myself I was protected? This is some kind of trick. Drop that gun, Indian. You see? I could not be sure whether you were telling the truth or not. So I took this necessary precaution. Well, what happened now? He thinks he's going to kill both of us, Redskin. But he couldn't be more wrong. I thought you said he had an injured leg. A slight prevarication, Uncle. To get you out here and prove just what your intentions were in front of a witness. And uh, what good will that do you after I kill your witness? I was not referring to the Indian, Uncle. Like you, I took the necessary precaution of protecting myself. There's a man with a gun standing behind you and that outlaw right now. Don't believe him, Baron. That's the oldest trick in the world. You still think it's a trick, Hagel? You're the masked man who was chasing me yesterday. Tano and I have been after you for a long time. Well, Uncle, what do you have to say now? Well, <laughs> I can only say that uh, I underestimated Your Highness. You have outwitted me. But <laughs> I'm an old hand in palace politics. I learned that the loss of a battle does not necessarily mean the loss of a war. It means the loss of this war, Baron, and you won't get a chance to fight another one. Tano, get some rope. Oh, you Americans are always so sure of yourself. But it's the quality I admire. Very well, my friend. I admit defeat. I can only duff my hat and salute my conqueror. Drop it in there. Come down here. You too, drop your other gun. As I warned you, Your Highness, the loss of a battle doesn't mean the loss of a war. Got a handle to you, Baron. That was mighty fast thinking. In my profession, one must think fast in order to survive. Keep your gun on them all the time. It's rather a shame, my prince. I think you would have made a good ruler if you had lived to rule. But of course, it's not the good who win thrones. It is the strong. I wouldn't count on it, Baron. You're not on the throne yet. Oh, you Americans. Such optimism, even when the cause is lost. Oh, what? Uh, don't think about it badly, my friend. After all, your country is new, raw, uncivilized. You could not hope to compete with old line European diplomacy and ingenuity. My people have been in this country a long time, too, Baron. Longer than your people have been in your country. We maybe know some tricks, too. You'd be surprised just how ingenious an American can be when he has to. Then you better display your ingenuity quickly, my friend, because you have just about 30 seconds on this earth. You killed the prince first, then the masked man, then the Indian. Well, that'll be a pleasure. Wait, Baron. What for? We have played our little game to the end, haven't we? Not quite the end. If you kill the prince, you may not recover the jewels he took when he ran away. Oh. You fled with more than just a clothes on your back, did you? Yes, I want the jewels before he died. I, I have no jewels. The jewels, please. Or must I kill you first and search you afterward? You better give them up, Prince. After all, you were willing to this morning. You practically pushed them at Tano as if they were a weapon. So I did. I'd almost forgotten. The uh, jewels are in my boot, Uncle. Have I your permission to get them? You have my order to get them up. Rick, you shot me, Uncle. Here he goes! Well, Hank, this time the war is really over. Yes, thanks to American ingenuity. Kegel and your uncle are safely in jail. But your uncle will have to stay there until your government decides what to do with him. Why are you dressed in Western clothes? Well, I thought if I was truly to learn about your wonderful country, then I should try to become one of you. You'll make a good ruler someday. Well, it's time that Tonto and I were riding out. 
I, I shall miss you both. I shall never be able to thank you enough for the wonderful lesson you've taught me. What do you mean? Well, it's not who a man is, but what he is that counts. Well, that's a lesson we all have to learn sooner or later, Hank. Or should I say, Prince? Adios. So long. Goodbye. Goodbye. your name was, boy? Chip, your right highness. Chip Truett. Well, do me a favor, Chip. As long as I'm in America, call me Hank. Hank? Well, it's a name I think I've rather earned. <laughs> Certainly proud of it. Almost as proud as that masked man must be of his name. The Lone Ranger. I am Silver! trouble, Tano. Crime wave continues. Clanton's robbed stage. Them plenty smart, Kimisami. Always head for Badlands, not leave trail to follow. I know. They have to be captured, Badlands or not. You have a plan? No, but I think I know someone who might help us. Your friend Blackhawk has a ranch near here, hasn't he? Ah, him know Badlands, too. Maybe have idea where Clanton's hideout. That's just what I'm hoping. Come on. That's another million dollars you owe me. That makes a total of... Hey, look! Father, come quick! Morning, boys. Is your father home, Keel? Boy, grow tall since we last year, Kimisabe. Do you remember us, Keel? Hello, Blackhawk. Welcome, my friends. This is a great surprise. It has been many moons since you have visited Blackhawk. What brings you to my ranch? We come to ask your help, Blackhawk. We're on trail of Clanton Brothers. We're certain they have a hideout in the Badlands north of here. You know that territory well. well. That is true, masked man, but it has been many years since I have been there. I don't know if I could be of much help to you. Uh, anything you can tell us better than what we know now. Tano's right. Even if you remember the canyons, the water holes, any place that Clanton's might set up camp. I will try to remember. Perhaps if you gave me some time to think, you will spend the night here. Thank you, but we must leave the first thing in the morning. Of course. Keo, put the horses in the stable and give them food and water. You remember my son, Keo, and this is Scott True, a neighbor boy. They are very good friends. We're happy to know you, Scott. Me too, sir. Go, Keo, or have you suddenly turned to stone? Is that really him? A lone ranger? Of course, and he remembered me. And I didn't think you and your father really knew him. Sure we do. He and Tando are two of our best friends. You heard them. They came to us my father's help. 
Maybe someday you and I can be like a masked man in Tonto. I'll have a horse like this, and we can go out and capture outlaws and... Hey, that's a swell idea. But why do we have to wait till we grow up? What do you mean? We could do it now. The masked man said he needed help. But Keo, those badlands are dangerous. My father taught me all about trekking, and I'm an Indian, just like Tonto. Indians know all about that sort of thing. My posture sure wouldn't like it, but I guess he wouldn't have to know. We'll leave them a note. We can ride out first thing in the morning before anybody is awake. I can't get a gun, though. Me either. But we don't have to really catch those outlaws. We'll just find out where they are, then tell the masked man and Tonto. Sure. Then we can cover the part of the Badlands they miss. Then there'll be four of us searching for the Clanton gang. You get some supplies and your horse, and we'll meet at our stables at sunup. And not a word to anybody. All right. We'll make a great team, Keo. We sure will, Kimasabi. Not much, my friend. Black Hawk wishes he could be of more help. The places you mentioned are certainly worth a try. At least at the start. If my leg were not this way, I would go with you. I know you would. Where's Keo? I wanted to say goodbye. I have been wondering the same thing. It is not like the boy to leave without telling me. Well, he's probably with his friend Scott. He was happy. We find out in stable. Boys go to look for outlaws. You what? It's from Keo, all right. Listen to this. Scott and I have gone to look for the Clanton brothers. Do not worry about us. We will do things just like the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Together we hope to be of help. If we find the Clanton brothers' hideout, we will contact the masked man. Signed, Keo. Tonto, this is serious. I've got to find them. I know how you feel, Black Hawk, but you can't go after them. You'd better notify Scott's parents. According to this letter, it looks as if Tonto and I are responsible. It's our job to find the boys and bring them back. Do not blame yourself, my friend. Boys do foolish things. I am not sorry they tried to be like you and Tonto. We'll do everything in our power to find them. Our search for the Clantons will have to wait. The Badlands are a big place, my friend. But I hope one thing. What that? The Clanton brothers do not find the boys first. Come on, Tonto. riding for days. We've covered a lot of miles since we left this morning. You tired? Not if you aren't. You have any idea where we are? All these rocks look the same to me. It's just a matter of reading the track the same, Scotty. Like that rock over there. It's, uh... What's the matter? I think that's the same rock we passed sometime this morning. Of course, there could be two alike. I'll bet we're lost, that's what. We couldn't be. I, I was sure I had a trail all figured out. But now I don't know. Aw, uh, I'm not really worried. We could find our way back if we wanted to. Sure we can. Let's ride that way a while. Nothing's going to happen to us, Kimasabi.
hurt bad, Kimitabi. We'll have to get a new doctor before we continue our search. Spend the night here. It'll be dark soon. We'll leave our horses here in back of the old hotel. We keep on trail tonight, Kim Sammy? Yes. We lost valuable time getting the driver to a doctor. It couldn't be helped. Lucky thing, I'm going to be all right. We've got a lot of ground to cover and still no sign of Keel and Scott. The Clanton's on the loose, the Badlands is a dangerous place, especially at night. The town will head north. That way we should be able to cover plenty of ground by morning. Ready to ride? Ah, uh, be ready. What time do you suppose it is? About midnight, I guess. Mm. Midnight? Well, maybe not quite. Let's try to go to sleep. All right. trapped. What are we gonna do? We'll just have to wait till they go to sleep, then sneak out. 
But my ankle. I'd never make it. Then I'll have to go alone. You stay here. I'll find the Long Ranger and tunnel. Are they asleep? I, I think so. Good luck. And hurry back, please. My ankle hurts something awful. Where's Scott? Scott hurt his ankle. He's in the old ghost town. That's where the Clanton's hideout is. We were lost and... Uh... You do foolish thing, boy. Can you lead us to this ghost town? Yes, sir. It is back that way. You are not mad at us, are you? We'll talk about that later. Right now, we've got to get to that ghost town as quick as we can. Ready, Wade. I wish you'd make up your mind. First it's a long rest, now it's a board. Well, I decided we ought to start spending some of that money we've been stealing. Can't do us any good in the ghost town. Well, we got enough supplies to get over the Badlands. Let's go. <laughs> One moment, I'll shoot. We got you surrounded. <laughs> it's a kid. Maybe I am a kid, but I can shoot this gun straight. Can you, bud? Well, let's see you do it. He's got my wooden gun. There's, there's lawmen all around this place. Hi there, bub. Take a look outside. What's your name, bub? You'll find out. Come on, tell me. We won't hurt you. We don't hurt kids. Wait, there is somebody out there. Over there, the hotel. All right. Get in there where you'll be safe. We better go around back, Kimo Zabi. Them's here, sweetie. Too late for that. Take cover. I can't see him now. Akio, you stay here and don't move. Yes, sir. Oh, and you can get into the hotel through a door in that saloon. You'll never get away. I told you we had you surrounded. Shut up, kid. Where are they now? They must be down the street someplace. I'll take a look.
Michael. You sure took care of him. We got all of them, didn't we? Yes, Kyo. We got all of them. You have my promise, Father. I will never again do anything as foolish. Boy, me too. I can hardly wait for my folks to get here so I can tell them how sorry I am. I'm plenty worried about you. I think you've both learned a good lesson. You should never go anyplace without first telling your parents. Yes, sir. Scott, take care of that ankle. I will, sir. Goodbye, my friends. And thank you. Gil, you mind your father? Yes, sir. I will. Adios. Boy, we sure are lucky having friends like Tano and the Lone Ranger. You said it, Kimasabi. <laughs> In town early. I may have good reason to ride past him, Sammy. Look. Daring nighttime escape from state prison. Last night, after slugging and injuring two guards, the notorious Dick Foley made good his boast that no prison was big enough to hold him. Foley was captured only last year after a desperate gun battle, in which his confederate, a young Mexican boy named Eduardo Mendoza, was killed. Dick Foley. I'd hope we'd seen the last of him. Me hope same thing, Kimisabe. We had plenty of trouble tracking him down. He may have plenty of good reason for breaking out of prison. Yes, a hundred thousand good reasons. The money he stole from that last bank job was never recovered. And now with his partner dead. Foley's the only one that knows where it is. You think that where I'm headed? Tano, I'm almost sure of it. Don't forget, he managed to hide that money before we captured him. But how we find him? We not know where to look for money. Now we know this much. The money is hidden somewhere in Devil's Canyon. Right where we captured him. If we ride fast, we maybe catch up with him. We'll go after Vic Foley as soon as we break up camp. Hello, Danny boy. Remember me, Vic Foley? Senor Vic, you have escaped. Do you think I wouldn't? But why have you come here? Because I need help. Food, clothes, horse. Most of all, you. Me? I do not understand. Look, kid, every lawman in the country be watching out for me. I don't dare show my face. Someone's got a front for me till I get where I'm headed. But where are you headed, Senor Vic? <laughs> where do you think? To pick up the $100,000 your brother and me took in the bank last year? But my brother is dead now. That's right. So his share belongs to you. 50,000 bucks. Why don't you want it? I do not know, Senor Vic. I have never stolen before. Look, kid, do you know why your brother helped me pull this job? It was for you and your sister, to help raise enough money to get this farm off the rocks. You two were near starving a year ago. We still are, Senor Vic. But somehow we managed to keep our heads above water. No. No, I cannot go with you. My, my sister Maria would be very unhappy. Then I'll give you another reason for going. Do you know how your brother died? See, I read it in the newspaper. There was a gunfight with an Indian and a masked man called the Lone Ranger. That's right. They captured me, and then they shot your brother in the back. In the back? Well, I did not know that. Well, now you know it, and I'm wondering if you're man enough to take his place, to collect the money he stole for you, and to help me get revenge on the two men who killed him. Revenge? How, Senor Vic? By helping me set a trap for them up in Devil's Canyon when they come after me again. And they will, I promise you that. They're like bloodhounds once they pick up the scent. But this time, we'll be ready and waiting for them. Are you coming or not? Si, sí, Senor Vic. I will come. But what about Maria? She will be very unhappy. But where is she now? Working in the fields. Well, what you want, I won't hurt her. We'll get some of your brother's clothes for me. Some guns and food. Sí, señor Vic.
Danny, why aren't you... No, not you, the evil one. I've forgotten what a spitfire you are, Maria. Why have you come back here? I had hoped that Danny and I would never see you again. Now, that ain't very friendly, seeing that I'm here to do you a favor. There is only one favor you can do us. Go, now. Oh, well, sure, Maria. Just as soon as your brother finishes running some errands for me. Danny, what do you mean? Our only weapons are these pistol and shotguns, Senor Vic. I will get food now and... Danny, me, why are you helping him? Because I know how our brother Eduardo died. Eduardo died because this man taught him to steal, and the law caught up with him. Eduardo died because he was shot in the back by a masked man called the Lone Ranger. I have read much about this Lone Ranger. He does not shoot people in the back. It's up to you, kid, whether you want to share on the money. Or you're man enough to avenge your brother's death. I will get food and saddle the horses, Senor Vic. It's Danny Mio now! Senor Foley, please. Because of you, one of my brothers is already dead. Do not take the other away from me, too. I'm sorry, Maria. I need him. Why? You are smarter and stronger than he is. And no man can draw a gun faster or shoot it straighter than you. That's what I thought until I met that masked man. What do you mean? I mean this. You know what it means for a man like me to lose his trigger finger? All my life, I've lived by the gun. And all because of that masked man, I can't hit the broadside of a barn. I'm glad. Glad! I hope you, the next bullet finds your heart. No, Danny, must stay! The food is in the saddlebag, Senor Vic. Come on, let's get going. But where is Maria? She went back to the fields, and if we want to get back to Devil's Canyon before the masked man and the Indian, we got to get going. We ask questions here, too, human Sammy? Yes, Toto. The Foley's headed for Devil's Canyon. He must have stolen a horse from one of these farms. You try the house. I'll ask in the barn. Be afraid. We not hurt you. What happened? Before I answer your question, Senor, you must answer some of mine. What are they? Are you the two men who captured Vic Foley last year? Now, that's right. Why you ask? The man who was with him, Eduardo Mendoza. How was he killed? He was shot in the back. By you? No, Senorita. It was Foley. When Foley saw me coming after him, he tried to use Mendoza as a shield. It was Foley's bullet that killed him. I should have known. Now you tell us how you will get hurt. See, si, senors. Vic Foley did it. I am Maria Mendoza, the sister of Eduardo. We're sorry. We didn't know. I do not blame you for what happened, senors. Eduardo had broken the law. But now Foley has persuaded my brother Danny to go with him. He has promised him money and revenge. Your brother not realize Foley just using him. Foley not kind of man to keep promise. I tried to warn him, senors, but it was no use. They are gone by now. Then we'll go after them as soon as we take you back to your house.
Rosa, where's Foley hiding? How did you know my name? Never mind how. Now, where's Foley? I do not know what you're talking about. Tell him. Search him. See if he has any of the money on him. No, it is mine. You have no right to take it from me. Look, Kimis, hubby. Thousand dollars. All in new bills. So you don't know what we're talking about. I would not take you to where Foley is, even if I could. Tano, I guess we have no choice. We'll take him back into town and turn him over to the authorities. We'll look for Foley later. You plenty foolish boy. Why, Foley's spending money. You spend next few years in jail. He's right, Mendoza. If you protect Foley, you'll only be an accessory to his crime. Of course, if that's what you want, let's go. Wait, senors. Supposing I did lead you to Foley's hideout, would I go free then? I can't make you any promises, but it'll certainly help. Very well. I will take you to him. Why should I not? He lied to me. He promised me half the money and, and then sent me away with just a thousand dollars. Where are him hiding? A cave in the mountains near here. Only we must hurry. He plans to leave as soon as dark. You must have it. You just stay right here. What's wrong, Tom? Me not trust boy, you must have it. Him give in too easy. And him make it plenty easy for me to find money on him. I know. We have no other choice. We've got to capture Foley before he does any more harm. I'm sure the boy knows where he's hiding. You're right, Kimisabi. Let me get boy's horse. Keep now. How far inside the cave is his hideout? Oh, a long way, senor. Through many tunnels. He cannot possibly hear us yet. I get lantern. This will give us light enough to see by. Come. is this way. What are you up to, Mendoza? This is a dead end. See, si, senors. The trap is sprung. And there's a gun on that entrance right now. Did I follow orders well, senor Vic? You sure did, kid. I couldn't have done better myself. So we are right all the time. You were leading us into a trap. See, si, senors. A trap for the men who shot my brother in the back. Senor Vic promised me revenge. And now I have it. You're a fool, Danny. We've got our guns falling. We're coming out shooting. I wouldn't try it if I were you, mister. I've got a shotgun leveled at the entrance to that room. And even a man without a trigger finger couldn't miss at this range. You're right, Kim, is that We don't have chance against shotgun. See how neatly the trap is sprung? They're beaten, Senor Vic. What you so happy about, boy? You caught in the same trap. Senor Vic will get me out. Senor Vic, they have their guns on me. How will you get me out? It's a good question, kid. I reckon there just ain't no way I can. No, Senor Vic. You cannot mean it. You are my friend. And just as soon shoot you as not. Perhaps I can prove to you he's not your friend. Foley! What do you want, masked man? You're planning to kill us. There's no reason the boy has to die, too. Now, we're willing to let him walk out of here if you want him to. <laughs> but I don't want him to. And you're smart enough to know that, mister. The way I've got it figured. 
A hundred thousand dollars ain't nearly enough for one man, let alone two. All right, Foley. What happens next? You just stay quiet. And you'll find out in about half a minute. Just about makes us even, masked man. So that's what Foley had planned for us. Slow death by suffocation. <laughs> Senor, how do we get out? Danny, Danny, don't lose your hip. You must have right. We dig slowly and save energy. <laughs> I think through in time. Yours. You have done it. We are free. We still may have time to catch Foley if we ride fast. Do you know where his hideout is? Si, senor. And this time when I lead you to it, there will be no traps. We are in time. There is Foley's horse. Tom, you and Danny stay here. He's less likely to spot one of us. But it is I who should risk my life this time. You do what my friends say. There's no job for boy. Kim is happy. You be plenty careful. Him still have shotgun. Danny. How can I ever thank you, senores? You have given me back my brother, whom I feared lost forever. I'm sure Danny has learned a lesson. He won't get in trouble again. No, senores. I know now who are my friends and who are my enemies. I know also that to get money, one must earn it, not steal it. You work plenty hard on farm and give you good living. Come on, Tunnel. Our job is done here. Adios. 
con Dios. They are fine men, Danny Mio. We must remember them in our prayers. See, sí, Maria. I think I will always remember the Lone Ranger.